Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today's channeling conversation will be with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. Of course, you know there's a playlist. I'm sure you know there's a playlist, right? Take a look at the playlist if you are a Freddie Mercury fan. There's many more different video channeling sessions with Mr. Freddie Mercury. So today we are going to actually talk about this concept of soulmate. I think it's really important for us to do that. Many of you have requested that I talk to him specifically about some of the relationships in his life. And I am after watching the movie Bohemian Rhapsody, which I have just very recently after as I'm recording this, it's been recent. I understand why I really do understand why you've asked about Mary, you've asked about Jim. And so let's talk about it. Okay. Now, the concept of soulmates is something that has a lot of different meanings, connotations for people. There's also a concept called twin flame. So if you've done any kind of spiritual work and understanding relationships, you've probably heard these kinds of terms. So the purpose of the, um, in the, for the purpose of our conversation today, we're going to focus on the concept of soulmate. So let's chat with Freddie Mercury about that and kind of see, instead of me telling you what it is, or you thinking you know what it is, let's talk to Freddie Mercury about what it is, shall we? And Freddie's already here. He's actually kind of sitting on this Ottoman type chair. It's um, just off to my the side here, kind of in front of me. And uh, we have chatted so much and I'm gonna, and I actually got up, you guys, you guys, I actually got up before I recorded this and grabbed some tissue because I feel kind of emotional connecting with him this morning. He's been around me and I honestly, you guys did not feel like channeling. <laughs> it's been another day of shoveling snow here in beautiful Minnesota. And I am exhausted this morning after getting up really early to make sure everybody could get out of the house and get down our you know, 200 plus foot driveway. All right, all right, all right, all right, enough of that. But I was tired. I didn't, I was, I was just like gonna do my sessions and kind of be mellow, do some work research stuff that I have to do and that was it. And he came to me when I was washing my face and he was like, you're gonna put on makeup, right? I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> wasn't really thinking about it. Do I look that bad? I mean, I just had a birthday. Is it really that bad? And Freddie's just like, and I just, I mean, he's just like a friend. I'm like, I, we need to talk. I will talk with you. I will share. I, I could talk with Freddie Mercury for hours. So I said, hey, let's talk about soulmates. What a great conversation. Because the other day after I recorded a video with you and we were talking about, I was sharing my response to Bohemian Rhapsody to seeing the movie and we were talking about that and then I tried to record a, a video about soulmates right after that and I never pushed the record button I talked we talked right for like 20 minutes and no recurring and I'm like hey how come you didn't tell me Freddie <laughs> how come you didn't even tell me and he says that's not my job that's not my job he's like darling I can't do everything I can't do everything. <laughs> it's funny. He's like, well, didn't you enjoy our conversation? I said, yes, I did. But so would you, the viewers. So here we are um, talking about soulmates. <laughs> oh my goodness. Much more of a casual style than some people are used to. Right? <laughs> we have so, he has such a wonderful energy. Okay, so come on, come on, come on. Let's talk about soulmates. We have to talk about this because in the movie, especially too, many people brought this up that, and from what I've, I've been seeing now after the movie, because of course, after you watch the movie, you're super curious, right? Weren't you? Weren't you curious about, I want to see the, the live footage of, the footage of Live Aid, like I wanted to see. Such a beautiful, oh my gosh, awesome scene. So I wanted to watch that, so I did. And then um, there was another um, interview that came on right after that uh, about with uh, Mary talking about you. And that's a piece that I think many people would love to 
If it, I mean, I know it's intimate. I really do feel that personal relationships are personal for a reason. They don't need to be on social media, Facebook, or the tabloids. But at the same time, there's such a beautiful mystery. And yet we all could feel, I, speaking for from a viewer who, I wasn't a fan of Queen, Freddie Mercury. I'm not a huge music fan. I know a lot of you are like, oh, you're not. I'm just, I've said that before when I've been channeling forever. I just, not huge. But that human connection, the beauty and the mystery of the relationship piece really kind of came forward in that, that movie. And many people were um, critical of the movie because it didn't show a well-rounded or raw, raw, right into your personal life. And a lot of, a lot of people who are in the public eye, a lot of celebrities and icons really, I have, I personally have a hard time with this um, because it, it kind of feels like we want to know because we feel like we shared it with you. Like the, the love, like we felt, I felt like I could feel it. And the portrayal of it in the movie and then also having your energy around I could feel the complexity of that relationships in general especially the one with what we would consider soulmates someone said that um, you even referred to her I think like I, I don't I hear this second hand so you have to correct me if it's not accurate but um, one of your fans on one of the comments talked about, well, Mary's his soulmate. Why didn't he talk about Mary? I think it, I actually, you know what? I think it was, it was in one of the transformative channels I did. Remember when we trans channeled? That was awesome. When we trans channeled and yeah, you were like smoking and, you know, alcohol and holding like, you know, like uh, etherically. <laughs> and, oh, I got a lot of, I got a lot of static about that, Mr. Mercury, you know, but, um, Someone commented on there about um, that you didn't talk about Mary. You didn't talk about that and that she was your soulmate. And so that's part of what the conversation I'd like to get into here. But at the same time, I also respect the fact that you're a person and you deserve privacy. And I don't want to like dig around. And he's like, well, it's a little too late for that, isn't it? Because it's a big movie, you know, it's a little too late for that. He says, oh, Bridget, he leans forward and kind of taps my knee like this. He goes, he goes, oh, Bridget. All of us, every one of us that steps into the limelight, we understand that this is one of the consequences. This is one of the things that just comes along with it. Everybody wants to know your business. And instead of getting all ruffled about it and all upset about it, he says, it's just the way it's hard. He says, it's hard. It is difficult. It's not easy. It's, it is difficult. But it's just, it's just part of the way it is. It's just the way it is, he says. It's just the way it is. And then he refers to the fact that it's a much harder nowadays because of social media. And he says the Twitters. <laughs> the Twitters. He says because of the Twitters that you have and the, and the, you know, the buzzes and all this stuff. And he's like, you know, everybody's talking about everything and stuff. And he says there's so much of that, you know. He says it wasn't that bad in... In, in my time, but they were right at you. You couldn't turn off the computer or avoid seeing them because they were right outside your door. He said they were at your doorstep. You know, the vultures were ascending. He says the vultures were ascending. And he said it particularly in the last um, days of my, of my lifetime. And so he says, it's quite all right to talk about Mary. So why didn't we talk about it in the first trans channel? Because I was like really criticized for that. So let me just say, He's looking at me like, you don't care what people think. He's like, you don't care. He's like, oh, Bridget, don't be silly. And he says, don't be silly. There's time for that. He says, there's time for that. There's plenty of time. We're not going to just talk once or twice, are we? He's like, isn't there? There's plenty of time, isn't there? Isn't there? He's like asking me, isn't there? Well, isn't there? You know, I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Right. So here we are. Let's talk about soulmates. I'm trying to get on track here, Mr. Mercury. 
This is going to be a long video if we don't cut to the chase here. Let's talk about the soulmate thing. I'm totally cool talking to you about that because I feel like it's um, something that you're you're kind enough to share. And because the understanding piece, he says, because the understanding piece is important, he says. So it, it's my understanding that there was this just deep love between you and Mary. And it feels like it was very reciprocated that she felt that way as well. Now, I know she still exists in the human plane, and I don't want to be say anything or share anything that would be offensive to her or intrusive to her at all. But from your perspective, Freddie, from the afterlife, what can you share about, about um, who Mary was to you and, and that relationship for you? He says, you know, it's hard to define. You can't put, he says, you can't put, uh, it's not parameters. I don't know what's, what's the word you're actually saying. I can't quite hear. You can't put limitations. He said, oh, oh, restrictions. Is that better? You cannot put restrictions on love. And to define that relationship is to devalue it. You know, he says to minimize it, you know, to make it unimportant. And it's not. Um, it's hard to get word for word right now. I'm just getting the essence, the energy. He says, because that's what you want. You want the feeling. Isn't that, is it, is it not? Is that not what you want? Is the feeling? Yes. When you're talking about soulmate, he says, you've got to deal with the feeling. The feelings is what, is what, is, if there is to be a definition, the feelings are the definition. It's, and then he shows me like, almost like a path, like a, like a, a beautiful, oh, oh my gosh, are we near your house? The garden lodge, are we near it? Because it feels like we are. I can see it so clairvoyantly. Oh, okay, you guys, okay. So I've seen pictures of this just briefly. I've seen snippets of this. So I think that's where we are. I think I'm not 100% sure you guys can write in the comments if you know where this is, but it's like a path. There's a, a it's almost like a, um, not dirt, but it's kind of like where the, yeah, it's kind of dirt, where the, the grass has been worn down, but it's not stone. It looks like almost like a gravel or a really worn down dirt. It's not like really big rocky gravel. It's not loud when you're walking on it. It's softer and smoothed out. It looks like over time people walking on the same place kind of wore in the, in the grass there. And, and then there's hedges, right? Big, really big hedges. <laughs> and they're kind of close to the path. It's weird a little bit. And so he's describing to me like the soulmate um, when we're talking about soulmate and this relationship, that it's this path, you know, and he said, he said, um, it's kind of like, here's the boundaries, you know, here's the edges of it. This is it. You know, when you're in it, this is it. And you, you're not looking all around you at things. You're just moving in this, this direction. You know, you're moving forward in this, in this uh, energy state, sort of. That's how it, it describes it. Okay. This is really confusing. So talk more about this. Um, it almost looks like he's showing me a way to get from his house to her house. And I know you were neighbors because, it, well, at least I think that's accurate. It was reflected in the movie that that was the case. I assume that that was historically accurate. He says, yes, she lived nearby. He said she lived nearby. And he says, you know, I think I loved her more than she loved me. Truthful. And I don't mean to be disrespectful or um, diminish, he says, the, the nature of love itself and who's to say who's better. But I, I, I really believe that she was the one person who, who deeply understood me, who knew me, and who doesn't want that? Who, who couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine more than that. And as time goes on and he's kind of describing to me that there's like this inner conflict. And so Freddie, we know that you were attracted to men, but that you had a deep love for Mary, that you really loved her. And 
so those two pieces like how could they not come together like if it's a soulmate isn't it supposed to be everything isn't that the definition of a soulmate or what what is maybe you can talk about that what is the definition of soulmate and why the, let's talk about this contrast piece if, if you don't mind talking about that if we can dig into that it might help someone who's who's watching understand more for themselves too to be more compassionate with themselves when they feel different or they feel that struggle no matter what what arena of your life the struggle is in or your contrast is in this might help i think so talk to me about soulmate he says it's just what it sounds like your soul has a mate and if you're lucky you will find one another and you will be together and we were he says we were together so i consider myself right lucky he says right lucky now that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be happy that doesn't guarantee happiness is not guaranteed it's not something that that is expected all the time in all the parts of your life and i don't i don't think it should be expected i think it should be when it's around, when it's received as a gift. It should be a gift and something that you share. And I don't, um, Mary's friendship and her ability to love me is something that I can see as one of the most beautiful gifts of my life is to have her in my life to just know that you're supported like that and really known she mary never really mary he says mary didn't judge me and mary didn't i don't say judge me that's not the right word that's not can you explain that again because i can't quite feel that energy he says with mary it was not it was not always easy. He said, we didn't see eye to eye all the time. He says, and he laughs at me. He puts this image in my head of roses and cherries because I say that sometimes like, it wasn't all roses and cherries. That's a Bridget thing, right? So he puts that image in my head, kind of being funny, playful with it. But he says, and he says, but she deserves so much more than what I could give her, provide to her. And, and more than just beyond a normal life, you know, he says, He says, there was nothing normal about our lives. <laughs> uh, and then I'm like, yeah, that's for sure. So, so, so love, loving someone, really knowing them, really being close with them is different than having a physical relationship with them and soulmate does that not require a physical relationship can you talk about that what do you think of that what do you think of that and he's like i do you think he's like looking at me like do you think i have all the answers <laughs> like well you're an afterlife you have access to them <laughs> you're an afterlife spirit can't you just tell us <laughs> he says but you're asking me to refer as freddie mercury upon the life of freddie mercury as i lived it and that would be much more mysterious he says and not defined not easily easily explainable he says i can't i couldn't explain it then how can i explain it now you know and i'm like because you have a different perspective he says quite right quite right i don't think there i he's like saying i believe that love can exist without he says well he's saying the, there's different kinds of love you know love is unconditional in the truest form you know the way god loves you the way you can love yourself and then he says romantic love is quite a different thing it's the relationship it's the human expression of what being in a relationship is and what love means when it's expressed through the body so to in order to be with your soulmate it doesn't have to be a physical experience or a sexual experience or a romantic experience it doesn't have to be and he showed me kind of the love of like an infatuation or a, des a desire or attraction to someone he says although that would be quite wonderful that would help 
to have that. <laughs> he says, but they're not mutually, um, they're not mutually exclusive, but they're also not both required in order to achieve the soulmate experience. So you can have friends that are soulmates then. He says, quite right. Quite right. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. All right. And I know, I know that when I would, if I were to describe it, that's what I, that's how I know it to be. That doesn't mean it's right when I say, well, that's what I know. It doesn't mean right. I know it doesn't equiv- um, doesn't uh, e- equate to right. Just so you know. <laughs> Just how we, each of us as individuals, interpret. All right. So this is complicated, huh? He says, quite simple, really. But yes, when you try to uh, process it with the mind, it, it definitely um, adds a layer, layers and layers upon layers of complexity. Yes. Yes, it does. All right. So we've talked about Mary and that she was your soulmate. What about Jim? People have asked about Jim in other conversations. And as you recall, as you might may or may not recall, Freddie, when we did our first trans channel where we shared energy space, you guys got to look at the playlist if you haven't watched that one. That one's pretty good. I believe it was pretty good. It felt really good to connect with him that way. Check out the playlist at Above Life channel. And when we talked in that one, you actually talked about Roger and some people, excuse me, you guys, some people were quite upset with me when you referred to him and you talked like you were together and it was, everything was fine and he was coming back and it was no big deal. And so um, I was going to question and ask you, well, did I get it wrong? Like when we were in that transformative channel, because I still have access, you know, I can influence the experience if I really need to from the, from behind the scenes, I totally can. Like I can be like, no, we're not doing this or don't talk about that. You know, I can try to do that. It usually screws up the channel just so you know, usually screws up the quality. I think I, I know I've learned over time that I have to, over the last few years of doing transformative channels, I have to stay behind the scenes and try not to be too pushy bossy or run the show. Cause I like, like, I don't want them to talk about some things sometimes. Like I'm like, don't talk about that. Come on, talk about this. Cause this is what people will be interested in. Anyway, kind of like a producer, right? Or that kind of thing. So you talked about Jim and I thought, well, gosh, maybe I did something. Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I used the wrong name my brain and with you channeling you maybe the wrong name came out and he says no 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 he says forgiveness is something that people need to learn people should people would really do good it would really do good for people to learn about forgiveness and then he says so there's no he says there's no ill will feelings there's no ill will with roger they totally saw each other in the afterlife like friendly like Freddie, like there's forgiveness there on both sides. And so there's none of the, you know, this, because I understand I'm watching the movie why people were upset about that because he was portrayed as this horrible, evil villain person. And I know from what you have kind of made me feel when I was watching the movie that it, it wasn't quite to that extent or that extreme. That's a projection. He says, and, and you got to remember that I was not just this little vic- a victim or I wasn't so vulnerable and fragile that someone else could just take advantage of me to that extent. And he says, so I want to be clear on that. It's no, you know, that he recognizes his roles, his choices as well. He totally recognizes that. So that's not to say Paul wasn't a, you know, a word that starts with an A. Um, and even worse words, if you want to insert them, don't post them on YouTube because I will delete them. I don't like the swear word stuff. Plus I think YouTube bans that anyhow. So it doesn't help to be mean and angry toward other people. And so that's kind of his vibe, right? So talk about Jim then talk about Jim. So are you together in the afterlife? And you know, because I guess the situation, and I don't know a lot about this. I just know that Jim and Mary, after your death, like didn't seem to really get along really well or something like Jim was in the house. And then when you get left the house to marry, because you left a lot of things to marry from what I understand, then she, then he, she had him move out and leave. Um, he says, you know, Oh, I don't blame Mary for any of that. He said, you know, you, you can't even imagine how hard it must've been for her. He says to still be in my life. And she was my family. He says, she was my family. She was like the closest thing to a wife that I ever could have. So, but what about Jim? So 
Jim, you were in a long-term relationship with Jim. I mean, was he your soulmate? He says, not, not like Mary, no. He says, no, no, not in the same way, no, no. But that doesn't dismiss the importance of the relationship. He says that as well. That doesn't dimin uh, minimize um, the relationship. He said Jim was very kind-hearted. He was very kind. He says he was so kind. He was so kind, you know, and he, he helped me be more like a real person, like a normal person. A real, he, say, he uses the word real person. I would use the translation normal person, you know, like us, like you and I, you know, not like non-celebrity like. That's what Jim made him feel like. And I think that was a gift for him. And, but after your death, and I know Jim has since made his transition and I'm not going to channel him in this video. Not going to do that. Um, but Freddie, will you talk a little bit about your relationship with Jim so that we understand? And not that you know, your relationship with Mary is better and your relationship with Jim is not as good. And that's not about that. It's not about the comparison or contrast, but that's kind of how people I think would perceive it based upon the movie and based upon the after, you know, knowing that you lived with him for seven years, but didn't really leave him much. He says, oh, I left him money. He said, I made sure he was taken care of. He was taken care of. He says, but you have to understand that Mary was like my wife. She was everything to me, everything. I, I promised her I would always take care of her and I keep my promises. He says, I keep my promises. And, and she has a family, you know, she has children. And besides, who's gonna take care of the cats? <sighs> Funny. All right, so he's not real serious about, or he doesn't get real deep into, he doesn't feel defensive of his relationship with Jim. He doesn't feel, like he has to take a stand and to profess his love for him. He feels like it was nice not to be lonely and it was nice to always have someone there. And so Jim was there when you actually died, when you left the body, he says, yes, yes, he was, yes, he was. And he said, and then it was over, it's over. So in the afterlife, did you reconnect? Yes, we did for a brief time, but Jim has other work to do. Jim has different things that he needs to accomplish, as do I. He says, I'm quite busy, you know. I'm like, yes, I do know. You're talking to a lot of people. I'm sure I'm visiting a lot of people since the Bohemian Rhapsody has kind of come onto the scene again. There's a lot of people wondering about Freddie Mercury and wanting to channel you and connect with you, whether they're channeling you because they're listening to music or reading a great book about you or I'm um, watching videos like this, contacting Freddie in the afterlife kind of a thing. So... All right, so there's really not a whole lot of meat there. I don't really feel any charge on there. I don't feel any kind of disgruntledness. I don't feel any kind of, I just feel like Mary's here and Jim's here. And I, I feel like Jim kind of knew that. And I don't want to say, it. gosh, I'm going to say it. I don't know how I feel about saying this, but I don't want to say he was second best, but he kind of knew that that's just the way it was. I mean, he wasn't Mary, you know? So... There's a lot of contrast in your love life, my friend, and not a lot of, you know, it looks, and it doesn't even look like you were confused at all because I, it's very clear that you were in love with Mary. You loved her, you were devoted to her, you were in relationship with her, she felt like family to you. But at the same time, there was no intimacy as far as a man and woman intimacy or a lover's intimacy and so, and this is personal, but I'm going to ask. Were you, so were you attracted to her? He says, yes, she's beautiful. She's so beautiful inside and out. Yes. And he said, when we made love, we made love. He says, yes, yes, absolutely. You know, so then there's this other part of you that had this attraction toward men. Like women weren't the, like this primal connection to want to be with someone else, want to join or union with, in union with someone else, the physical attraction wasn't there for, for that for you, but for men it was. So how did you kind of come to terms with that? He says, you know, he says, you know, I think we all have needs and the way we choose to fulfill those needs is, is a choice. He said, it's a choice. And so many, he says, many criticized me, you know, for my wild parties and my risque behavior. And some might even say that I, 
Oh, oh, don't, God, don't say that. Please don't say that because that really is hard to say. He says that I deserved my fate. That's what he said, that I deserved my fate. And he said, no one deserves to die horribly or painfully or no one deserves that. He said, that's just, that's something horrible to say. He says, but I know that's the truth. He says, I know that's the truth. He says, but I don't know how to respond to that. He says, I don't even know how to change people's minds. I, I quite frankly, he says, don't have the energy nor the earthly time to try to convince people to think differently about that. And so in my lifetime, it was so, you have to understand, he says to me, you have to understand it was so very different. And the mind and the value belief systems that people have, that you have, that I had, he said that I had, were limiting. You know, they held you back from allowing yourself to really be fulfilled or happy. And it always seemed like the needs that you had, the, and he's like the natural needs the desire to be with someone, to be intimate with someone, and to just be in, oh my God. Okay, so he's like showing me, I don't need to say that. Um, he's like showing me like just this incredible um, connection through human bodies together. Just, just, the, the, just the incredible natural attraction, you know? And he says, and, and we're led to believe that that's bad. That's bad. And so if it's going to be bad, you might as well be bad really good, he says. So I'm not, he says, he's not making excuses or trying to explain to anybody his behaviors because that's not for, he's not interested at all in doing that. I'm just going to be clear on that. And you shouldn't have to. He says, but you, he says, and the viewers should understand that it is so different now than it was then. So different. It was so vilified to be anything but uh, a man who loves a woman or a woman who is in love with a man. It was so, that was the ex, that was the, not just the social norm, but the expectation, even in your own mind, that this is how it's supposed to be. And when it's not that way, then it's, there is, of course, an incredible amount of inner conflict. And so, uh, uh, making you feel bad, guilty, shame, all of those things, and, and very, he says, very vulnerable, not really knowing ever really knowing that it's okay that love unconditional love god love self love and human union expression of love that expression of love that that the needs and the desires and the wants and all of that can be in one place or or as one in a like a whole package he said that's something i never I, n I never had that. He said, I never had that. He says, and I think that there's probably many people that don't because they just can't get to a place to bring those parts of their lives together. You know, he says, that's sad. That's what's really sad. If you want to think of tragedy, that's tragedy. He says, but I don't want people to be, feel sorry for me at all. And that I didn't have love. I did have love. I had it in two forms. I don't think that that is any kind of a defeat. I think it's quite triumphant, he said. Now, quite victorious. Yeah, quite victorious. So, hmm. Okay, this is a lot, Freddie. We've been around all over the place in this video. I'm going to have to watch this one back, you guys, before I share it with you to see if it is, like, if you're able to follow it. Oh, my goodness, there's a lot of stuff here. So what did you think? What did you think about this video? Talking with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife about soulmates. He talks about Mary, he talks about John, and he even talks about Roger. And he tries to describe to us this concept of relationships and things. What do you think about that? Like what sparks within you on this, in this conversation or this dialogue? You can go ahead and put that in the comments. Please make sure that your comments are appropriate, value added, and kind. I very much appreciate that. And that is the expectation here at Above Life Channel. All right. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for your time today, hanging out with me and Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Absolutely appreciate that. Give it a thumbs up. 
If you want to share it with someone, go ahead and do that and check out the playlist. Remember, the purpose here is always with every new channel. I do channels weekly. You get them on Mondays. You can come here and find them. Every Monday, there's a new channel. The purpose of the channeling talks with the afterlife celebrities is to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope, because this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching and thank you for being here.